Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our panel this morning as we hear from students who have been impacted in some way by uh, the recent hurricanes. Uh, we're grateful that you are here and grateful to the folks here on our panel. We want to begin with uh, introductions. So I'm going to ask the members of our panel to uh, tell you their names, where they're from, um, their majors at King, and uh, their classification here. So let's begin. I am Tiquania Lake, a senior math and physics major, and I am from the island of St. Thomas. I am Jamara Rogers. I am a freshman psychology major from St. Thomas. My name is Odessa Sotomayor. I am from St. Thomas. My major is business management, and I am a freshman. Good morning. My name is Anissa Hedrington. I'm a sophomore nursing major, and I'm from the island of St. Thomas. My name is Jermaine Laronde. I'm a sophomore. My major is DMED, and I'm from St. Thomas. To begin, let, let's uh, start by talking about the damage that the territory has suffered. Taquania, do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, would you like to stand? Do you want to? Okay. Okay. So first. When you hear St. Thomas, you probably don't know where it is. And that's the question we often get. Where is St. Thomas? And so relative to Florida, which is right up, oh, where's my, oh, where's, okay. That's Florida, and we are right here. So that's where we are. St. Thomas, um, the Virgin Islands consists of three main islands. St. Thomas, that's where we all are from. St. John and St. Croix. And there's one guy here who's from St. Croix. These are some before pictures before we were devastated by the hurricane. So as you can see, we're a beautiful island. Um, you can see our nice cruise ships. This is another picture. That's one of our main hotels. And that's what we call waterfront. So that's what everyone sees as they drive on the front of our island. And so now I'm gonna show you some damage that was done. This is a guy, and as you can see, his front wall is gone. And he posted this photo on Facebook and he was like, even though Hurricane Irma destroyed my wall, it gave me a great view, so now I can absorb nature. So he was being very optimistic and hopeful about the situation. This is a young man, old man. Um, <laughs> he lost his house, and this is where he's living right now. And as you can see, these are not good conditions. This is a line to get into a grocery store after the hurricane. And some people said that they had to stand in that line for five hours just to get inside of the grocery store. This is just a picture of some damage. As you can see, no trees, brown. This is four of us high school. All of us graduated from this high school and the roof and everything is gone. That's just some debris, houses, roofs. This is a house and the roof is partly gone. Some more pictures, just some debris. This building is, has collapsed, basically. Hopefully no one was in there. This is a softball stadium. Um, there's no more stadium to it, of course. This is our airport. So this is the inside, and that's why for weeks we had no commercial flights being able to fly in. This is our post office, and that's why no one can receive mail. This is a church, completely destroyed. This is flooding, and this is actually happening right now. So every time there's a little bit of rain, um, because of the hurricane debris, all the drains are clogged. So even now, after the hurricane is gone, it's still flooding. And this is a video. And 
and this is a housing community. And that's the damage that this housing community has sustained. And most of our debts actually came from this housing community because it collapsed. So our road to re recovery. Um, even though we were devastated, we have hope. We believe that we will be paradise once again. And electricity in the territory has not been fully restored. They gave it a timeline, so most residents will be out of electricity until December, Christmas. And so this is how we're doing laundry. And so you fill a bin with water, you scrub your clothes with your hands, and then you put your pins on your clothes, and you go to the line that you hang from tree to tree and you hang out your clothes. And we have washers and dryers in the Caribbean. Um, I have a washer and dryer at my home, but my mom made sure she taught me how to do this. Because in the Caribbean, we try to teach our children how to survive. This is how they cook. And so you get your blocks and you get your wood and you make a fire and then you just put your pot on top of your blocks and you get some of the best food ever. These are our linemen working to restore electricity. Unfortunately, one of them died while trying to restore electricity. They were electrocuted while working on the poles. And then this is our hurricane relief drive that SGA is doing. They're still collecting items to ship home to our families. So if you can please help us out, we will really appreciate it. And thank you in advance for your help. Let's take a few minutes. Uh, and if you will, tell us about the experiences of your families and what kind of damage did they suffer? Okay, well, on my behalf, my family was okay. It took me like a good like week and a half to contact them as it did most of us sitting here. Um, but our houses are built to be like strong due to the fact that we do have hurricane seasons. So apart from the house damage, everyone's family is okay, so. Okay. Um, my grandmother, suffered from a, a, a lot of flooding. She has cracks in her walls. Um, my friends have suffered from roofs leaving their houses and caving in. But other than the house damage, they're okay. Others? Um, my family is great for the most part. They are surviving. They were taught to survive. Um, just some flooding, some emotional um, feelings, you know, most of them, some of them are like depressed because there's nothing to wake up to. They're still on curfew, so they have to be um, in the house by like six, and you're in the house in darkness, there's nothing to do. Um, so I think that's what's affecting them the most right now, but in terms of damage to the houses, they've been fine for the most part. Okay, so my personal situation with this is that, so I have a lot of younger siblings, and at first I wasn't able to get in contact with them, so at first I only got in contact with my mother like a week after the hurricane, and then I have another sibling on my father's side that, who I wasn't able to get in contact with until like two weeks after the hurricane, and in my house that I lived in, um, water came under the doors and through the windows and then eventually water started coming up through the floor because the floor the ground was so saturated so because water got into the house now in certain areas of the house electricity doesn't work and it's kind of hard to maneuver around it so that's one of my personal experiences i also have a friend who's like really close she lost the whole roof to her house so she basically has no clothes because the roof came off from her bedroom. So there's nothing in her room that she can use because it's probably full of mold and wet. Okay. 
Um, for the most part, my mom's house is fine. It just flooded and part of the balcony is gone. Um, my dad's house, the roof was gone, a lot of flooding, and that's basically it. Jamira and Odessa, you mentioned uh, the length of time that it took to get in contact with your families. Uh, what was that like for you or for others of you as well? A lot of crying, you know, a lot, <laughs> a lot of crying because like you're just like hoping and wondering if like your family's okay and you're like here like abroad and then you're just like uh what's happening where's my family how are they doing because like there's no source of communication the poles are down um so it was it was like really emotional experience um my grandma's an old lady so i was really 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 worried i still haven't been able to get in direct contact with her direct contact with her and it's been weeks but um luckily there's people that I'm really close with that are on island that were able to go to her house and speak with her and you know tell her that I'm looking out and worried but um, I still haven't been able to get in direct contact with anyone other than my best friend. It was devastating. I stayed in my room and I cried and I cried. I called my favorite professor, Miss Trainer. She came and she got me. She took me off campus. It was not a great feeling. And what made it more difficult for me was that um, all of my mom's children are in the U.S. in college. And so she went through this hurricane by herself. And it was really hard because it's hard knowing that your mom is suffering and there's nothing that you can do. And so that's what brought about more, the most pain in my life during this time. So with um, not being able to be in contact, like Odessa said, it like led to a lot of crying, but because we all kind of band together to that time, we all got through it together by being there for each other and having like prayer groups and stuff. How are your families uh, surviving without electricity? We saw some of this on the video. Okay, so my house is in the heart, well, the heart and the capital of the Virgin Islands, which is Shalamai. So because my house is in the um, capital, I have power because they're trying to restore power to the more, they're, okay, not, let me not say that. There, there was less damage in Shalamai than any, any, than any other part of the island. And because it's more tourist populated, they restored power there more quicker. So yeah, so I have power. I mean, every once in a while it goes in and out, but my family has power for the most part. I have friends that don't have power and they go to like various areas on the island to like get Wi-Fi or to plug in their phones so they can get in contact with family members. Um, my grandmother has no power and she doesn't have a cell phone. So that's why I can't get in direct contact with her. She only has a landline. Um, I have a friend of mine that <clears throat> he has no power and his neighbor completely lost his house so he had to have his, his neighbor now lives with him and um, he's lost like a couple uh, a couple doors and windows but for the most part he has a phone so he can get in contact with people but um, there's only certain times when the signal will last so long so you're not really able to speak for them for a long time and it's more so like they gotta call you, and if you wanna call them, it's like you gotta text them and see when they have signal to call, but it's not always 100%. Okay, so my parents, they aren't together, so my father's house is like gone. So he, he owns a, a shop, like a jewelry store, and so he's in that right now, and then my mom, well, her apartment is fine, so Basically what she's doing is she's using like rainwater, either that or like cistern water, which it's like a system where the water comes through like the drains from the like rain and it like settles into like a tank and then they use that. Um, so yeah. Okay, my mom, I don't know how my dad's doing right now, but my mom, she used the cistern water, she dips it out and she heats it up on her gas stove and she, you know, showers with it and so on and so forth. And she also, 
I don't know, she, she's a survivor. She know how to cook from gas, stoves, outside, everything. So she is, she's doing okay. How are uh, food and other supplies being provided right now? Um, the U.S. military has been very active, I would say. Um, they've been delivering MREs, military food, and restaurants that have survived during the hurricane has been cooking for residents for free, which is good, a sense of unity. And just everyone is just helping each other out. Um, in the Caribbean, we consider ourselves a community. It takes a community to raise a child. When they say that, they mean that. And so they've just been working together and helping each other and cooking. If my neighbor doesn't have a stove, then I will cook for them and that kind of thing. Takwani, you touched on this a little bit. Um, how are you all handling the situation being so far away from your families? It's hard. <laughs> like, I grew up, well, I'm only speaking about my grandmother because she's the only one that's home at the moment. Luckily, my sister and her children and um, my brother and my mom and dad were able to leave. My oldest sister is still back home. But um, I was never, I never got in contact with her. But I know that she's okay because she spoke to my mom. But it's, it's stressful because my grandmother is home and she's an old lady and she's a really strong, independent old lady and she takes care of herself. But I grew up with her, she took care of me and it's like, she's like my heart. So it really hurts that I can't speak to her. But knowing that she's okay, it's a relief to me, but it still kind of sucks because I can't speak with her. Um, like someone said before, we bounce energy off of each other. So before the hurricane, I probably didn't have any of these girls' numbers. Um, but when we heard the hurricane was approaching, we knew that it was time to come together. We knew that in order to make a difference from afar, we would have to have a group of people. And so we came together, we started a group chat, we prayed every night, and I think we're all grateful for that opportunity. Even though we're going through a troubling time, there were definitely pros and benefits that came out of this situation. And so I think that because of each other, we've been able to grow and get back our happiness and move on with life together. I could say that like being with these girls helped a lot because a lot of us were going through depression and a lot of us were really sad about the situation. We'd cry during class or like cry in our rooms, but some of us would text each other and be like, going back into depression. And then we would come and meet up and be like, it's okay, like we're here. We would all, and the prayer sessions were probably the most, the best thing that we needed not only that, but we would make light of everything and we would try to joke around and be like, St. Thomas people can't take nothing serious because they would put memes and stuff about the whole hurricane going on, you know? So it was like, we would try to make light of it and uplift our vibes and our, our energy, so. Anyone else? Okay, so with this whole ordeal, um, so I come from a really kind of large family. I have about six people that live in my house and we're kind of really close and with this experience being the furthest time that I've been away from my mother and any of my other siblings and it really hurt more because my older brother, um, I have two, me and my brother are the two oldest siblings and we left on the same day and we left our mother there with all our younger siblings and it like really hurt to think that She's there by herself. Well, not really by herself, but she's there with a seven-year-old and a 12-year-old. And you don't know like, how much they could really help with the situation. So that kind of really hurt me. Tell us about the schools um, there. Had the school year already started? Uh, what's the current situation? What sort of accommodations are needed? Uh, school started about two or three days ago. It was Tuesday. School started Tuesday. Um, I think it's like block hours, right? Um, yeah. 
it's really block hours. It's not like a like how we have school where it's from morning to afternoon, but I mean. Okay. Um, the school population is now half the size it used to be because um, the kids either had to move to the states because their homes got destroyed or um, the island was too devastating to continue living on. So it's now half the size it used to be. So my mother is a teacher in the Virgin Islands and uh, the school that she teaches at didn't receive as much damage as other schools. Like you can see, our alma mater, Shalamai, was damaged where the gym no longer has a roof. And because of that, the one middle school and the one high school has to do split sessions where the middle school will come in the morning and the high school will come in the afternoon. And my mother teaches in elementary school, so it's kind of hard because the population of the school has dropped. So her class is now probably full of mold due to the fact that rain probably got inside and they're trying to like fix that, but there's really not much you can do with the limited supplies that they have. Some of the schools have been condemned. They're no longer a healthy learning environment for students. And so um, that's clearly a problem. And that's why a lot of students have moved to the mainland. What are you hearing, what is the public hearing uh, about the timeline for recovery, restoration? So like I said, electricity will not be fully restored until Christmas. Um, our territory thrives off of tourism. So when people up here visit us, that's how we make our money to sustain financially. And we have a lot of hotels on the island, but two of the main five-star hotels um, released a statement recently saying that they will not be open until December of 2018, which means that now we're going to be in a financial problem because now we have to find a way to sustain the whole territory. So that's all we've heard about timeline for recovery so far. But we are like, we're building pretty quickly, I have to admit. We, uh, buildings and businesses are slowly but surely uh, getting back together. So it's not that bad for the most part. But we still are going to financially be struggling. Uh, something, again, that you've touched on, but I, uh, we would like to hear more about is uh, the sense of unity among folks in the U.S. Virgin Islands. that has maybe resulted from this or maybe was present uh, going into it. Okay, so my home church, which is the Memorial Marivian Church, they decided to have like, uh, not too sure what you call it, but they decided to like bring things and say you had like two cans of soup and one person needed one. So you, you brought your two cans of soup and some one else would pick it up and then they would go with it. So it brought them together as in, if your neighbor needed something or if you needed something, they would offer it to you. And this is just, they really band together. I know that um, after the hurricane, I wanna say it was Irma, different grocery stores and uh, different um, churches held like um, food drives, but not only that, but they like would cook food and then tell like the public that they can come to this area and they would be able to serve food to them and stuff like that. Um, I also know that St. Croix went after Irma, St. Croix sent over ships of supplies to St. Thomas um, for us and then like Hurricane Maria hit, so then both of us were in problems after that, but yeah. Any others? To clarify what Jermaine said, Hurricane Irma hit St. Thomas and St. John very bad, and St. Croix missed the mark. So St. Croix did not get hit that much from Hurricane Irma. But then about two weeks later, Hurricane Maria came and St. Croix got the damage that it missed the first time. And so when St. Thomas and St. John got hit the first time, St. Croix, not knowing that Hurricane Maria was coming, sent all their supplies over to St. Thomas to help us. 
and then Hurricane Maria hit them and so then it was a big issue because we couldn't help them and they couldn't help us. Also, um, Puerto Rico was helping us as well and when they got hit by Maria, we couldn't help them either. So all the islands was in trouble after Hurricane Maria. How have the hurricanes affected your plans? Did you come to King planning to go back uh, and have the hurricanes mm -hmm. change that? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I had no intentions of going back home after King. And that's just because what I chose to get my degree in, it wouldn't be much benefit if I go home. Um, but after the hurricane, will I probably be home? Most definitely. Um, I feel like I have things to do from my home. And so I'm open to the idea of going home now. Um, I do plan on going home after King because one of my scholarships require it. But also I do, I want to give back to my community because I feel like it has taught me a lot. And for me to not go back home to it, it's like, I'm ungrateful, you know? So, yeah. Jermaine, do you want to say more about how your plans have changed? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was even interested in going back home, um, even like over the Christmas, over, over the summer, even so. And, um, but they were just saying like, my friends and my family just told me don't because it's just depressing, really and truly. So hopefully the road to recovery will not take more than two to three years, hopefully, where I can come back home after college and, you know, enjoy the luxury of paradise. So. Um, after King, I do plan on going back home. Like Anissa said, it would be ungrateful if I, like, you don't go back and help out due to the fact that the island is so small but it gives us so much like we don't really realize it because we're from the island until we actually leave the island that it's like whoa so yeah um upon attending king i wasn't sure if i wanted to go back home i know i wanted to start a program at home but I wasn't sure if I was going to live there, but now going through this whole ordeal, because I want to study psychology and I want to be a clinical psychologist, I feel like it's most necessary for me to go back home and help those who may be suffering from like post-traumatic stress or any other mental disorders or illnesses because of my major. So, How has uh, this experience affected your faith and how has faith been important for you during this time? Like I said earlier, we started a prayer group, and we were praying, and we were praying. Um, after Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Jose was on path to hit us. And we got together every night, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed that hurricane away, and it did not hit us. But I'm not going to sit up here and act like I didn't question God. Um, it was hard. At first I was like, why? Why? And we had a lot of crime going on in our island at the time and I would be like, maybe it's just God wants us to be more unified. Maybe this is his way of saying y'all need to start over and get it together. And so I started having those thoughts and I was just, it was hard. I was questioning my faith, honestly, I'm gonna be honest. But at the same time, I still um, kept praying and kept being hopeful and we got through it, right? <laughs> um, all I have to say is prayer works. It really does. Prayer and patience. It's the key. <laughs> Serious. Making the connection with all these girls and um, also seeing that the professors and the students around the school that heard about the incident, heard about the disaster, they definitely showed their concern and, you know, was willing to help whatever, with whatever we needed help with and showed that they were concerned about it as well and would say, like, you know, they're here if they need, if we need to talk. Um, I know that 
trainer and Emily like called us over when we were walking past the oval. They yelled at us. They called us over when we were walking on the oval and was like, come here. And we got the chance to sit down and speak with them. And it just feels comfortable that, you know, people are out there that are concerned and, you know, are willing to help. So that built us, that gave us the more comfort and faith that we would be okay, you know, that there's people here to help. So. What have you learned from this experience? Don't take life for granted. <laughs> um, what I learned through this experience is that you have to be patient. Like I said, I didn't get in contact with most of my family members till weeks, or weeks later. And even when I did get in contact with them, it was probably for like one or two minutes. So you just have to be patient and always hope for the best. It will not rain forever. Um, it's hard to see the rainbow when you're going through the storm, but eventually it will get there. Um, when I was depressed, I never thought I would be happy again. I knew that I was gonna be happy again, actually, but it was just like, I didn't know how long it would take for me to get over it. I was angry. If you probably saw me around, you probably saw a mad face. <laughs> Um, I always have a mad face, but um, no, for real, I was angry, and I did not know how to calm myself down. I didn't want to go to class. I just, it was just not a happy time, and I learned that even when you're going through the storm, you have to be hopeful, you have to be optimistic, and then you have to, because we're not there, we had to be the light for our parents because they're in the situation and they're depressed. And if we are calling them, it makes no sense for us to make them more depressed. So it was our job to like put our feelings aside and be happy and be hopeful when we're on the phone. But when we hang up, we're in bed crying. And that's fine because they couldn't see us crying. But you have to um, be optimistic even though you're going through a storm. That's what I learned. Um, the same as Taquania, I learned to be positive because if you're negative around the situation, uh, it's just like we were saying before, energy is transferable, we, it bounces off each other. So um, I was being really positive about it. You know, it was making me depressed. We, were sh we would share a couple negative comments about like, man, this is crazy, like what are we gonna do? When is our island gonna get back together? Like this is gonna be a long time, but you know, thinking about it, you just gotta be positive about it. Especially, I would show my, uh, my sorrow with my sister because she grew up with my grandmother as well and like I'd be just so devastated but you know I'd com I communicated with my friends that would be on island to speak with her and just tell her like I love her just be like you know I'm here whenever you can just try and get in contact with me I love you I miss you and I got that the message relayed back that she's okay so it was like just being positive and also being positive around these girls it helped them not um, fall into depression for so long it helped them uh, you know, uplift their vibes and be happy, so. So I'm not gonna lie, throughout this whole situation, I was just, I was, I was just emotional. I cried a lot. I was like, they honestly helped me so much. Not only them, but like the president, Suzanne, Ms. Trainer, my friends that are in here. Hi guys, I'm not gonna name all of you, but. Um, so like without like support, there's nothing to like feed off of. Like I would probably be like, still be crying about it. I'm a little choked up, but probably still be crying about it. But um, you do have to stay positive. So like I would just call my mom and be like, hey, how are you? I would just like to hear her voice because if I stayed on the phone with her for a long period of time, I'd probably like break down. So I was just trying to make sure she's okay. But yeah, so the support system was just great here at King and within the group here. Any others? You've given me a lot to think about and uh, some things to leave here with. What would you like for us uh, to leave here with or to leave here thinking about as we go? I want you guys, most of all, to be aware, to understand that the Caribbean is it's paradise. Um, it's paradise, but we do go through things. And when we are not paradise, we still would like your love and your support. And 
if you see us around, you can stop and you can give us a hug because more than likely we need it, okay? And I just want you guys to understand that it's not as easy to evacuate because that's what a lot of Americans are like. Why haven't you evacuated? It's not easy. It really isn't easy. It's not easy to just leave everything that you have worked hard for and invested your time in and just move to somewhere else. It's not easy. Um, I just want you guys to understand that we are hurting. We will be hurting for a while, but we want you guys to have our backs because we will have your backs too. Um, yeah. Spread the word. Keep us in your prayers, thoughts, please. We need the help, you know. Um, um, the relief drive, you know, contribute to that, please. And thank you. Um, wow, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, well, what I want King to leave with today is basically to understand that we are I wouldn't say we're more important than anyone else, but we are relevant, basically. And that the Virgin Islands is a part of America, and we went through something, and I feel personally that there, we haven't been shown enough attention as we should be, especially with the amount of devastation that we went through. And I just want you guys to understand that we need help. Um, the same as Tukwani, I wanted to say to stay aware because Back home, there was certain there was certain times where we were against each other. Um, people were stealing from each other. They were looting. So, unfortunately, we weren't building as we weren't holding each other together. We weren't as unity as we are as united as we are now. But um, it would help if we didn't have people here against us as well and you know are aware that we're going through this and care that we're going through this you don't even have to show like your concern but just you know like don't be um like saying that it's not a real like it's not that serious and like you guys will be okay like we know we're going to be okay but you know show that a little sensitivity i guess you know good words anisa did you want to say something <laughs> You've talked about the importance of prayer. Uh, I would like for us to, to close with prayer. If it's okay with you, I would like to begin. And then I would like for you all to offer prayers. Um, if you're willing to do so. So I will begin. And then I will pause. Uh, and, and let you all uh, pray for the Virgin Islands. And more, uh, if you would like. And then I will close us out. Okay. Lord, we give thanks to you for your faithfulness to us, your generosity to us, and for the communities that you have placed us in that have uh, shown your love and your care and your faithfulness to all of us. We're grateful for the support of others in this community, for professors and for friends, and we're grateful for all of those um, who are working to provide support in the aftermath of uh, these recent hurricanes. Lord, we want to give you thanks for keeping the Virgin Islands lifted. We just pray that you continue to love us unconditionally, continue to help us to grow in you, help us to win souls to your kingdom, Lord. I just pray that everyone that may be suffering from depression, that you just lift their spirits, um, renew their minds, renew their hearts, and renew their souls. Help them to be fully devoted to you and trust you in spite of what they're going through. Lord, that I pray that you help our road to recovery be quicker and safer. Um, pray that you help our families stay safe in this time and that any tropical storm or uh, another hurricane come, because we're still in hurricane season, um, protect us and keep us safe. We pray this morning, Lord, for all who have experienced such devastating loss in the recent hurricanes and earthquakes and wildfires. Give strength to those who rebuild, bring healing and comfort to those who grieve. 
move us to act on behalf of others, to love our neighbors uh, truly as ourselves. We pray for those in the aftermath of the shooting in Las Vegas, those who grieve the loss of loved ones, those who live with the horror and trauma of that event. We pray this morning for all of those in this community whose family members are sick or in the hospital, and for those in this community who struggle with various kinds of illness. Lord, you know where we are and what concerns each of us. As we near, or we are now at this midterm, we ask for your strength in the remainder of this semester. Help us to be diligent in our work and to care for ourselves and for one another. We ask for your peace, for your love. We pray for our friends and our families, and for those in this community, and we pray for our enemies. Guide us through your Holy Spirit Give us your strength and your peace and your protection through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for sharing with us. We're grateful for you being with us this morning. And thank you all for joining us. Go in peace.